If you're looking for paradise, you'll find it between cracking the throttle and scraping the sky. Introducing the 2008 M Series. The Mountain Man's favorite snowmobile has lost weight, 9.5 pounds. We replaced alloy with thin air. Even the running boards went under the diamond tip knife. The large openings reduce the amount of snow and ice buildup. The new running boards offer great traction and lots of room. But the bulk of the weight has been removed from the super strong, super rigid skid frame. For your high-flying, powder-carving, side-hilling entertainment, the M6, the M8, and the almighty M1000 are back. The M1000's 50-millimeter throttle bodies, multi-stage APV exhaust valves, exhaust pipe temperature sensor, and two spark plugs per cylinder reduce emissions and increase fuel economy while producing way more fun than most riders know what to do with. The M8 is a stellar machine. When you consider how much bang you get for the buck, it's easy to understand why riders are lining up to fly this one. If it's a bargain you're looking for, the M6 is not to be missed. The batteryless EFI power plant gives back generously, regardless of incline. Snow Pro models get the lighter, more aggressive Fox Float ski shocks. The rear suspension boasts an incredible 19 inches of travel and is dampened with a lightweight aluminum Fox Zero Pro gas shock. The M6 is equipped with a 153-inch Camouflage Challenger track. The M8 and the M1000 get the 153-inch or the 162-inch. All tracks feature 2.25-inch paddles set 3 inches apart. And by the way, that track is 15 inches wide. Up front, the AWS 6 front suspension handles the bumps with precision and ease. We added our racing spindles to reduce weight and tighten the turning radius by 10 degrees. With its narrow stance, this sled is perfect for carving and side hilling. Class leading horsepower and ultra low weight is a good start, but it's the details you don't see that make the fun last. It begins with an ideal rider position and handlebar control configuration. The mountain handlebar, wide hooked with a grab strap for off-trail maneuverability, is perfect. Other notables include an easily removable seat and hood, removable side panels, adjustable ski stands, and an exhaust outlet location that prevents snow capping. It's this kind of engineering that brings out the best in a rider. So, which will it be? Three respectable machines, the M1000, the M8, and the M6. Can't go wrong with any of them, only up. Sometimes your mind and the trail wander in different directions. Last night, the heavens delivered a couple feet of virgin powder. While other performance machines overheat with lust, not this one. It's a crossfire. Defined by its performance suspension up front and off-trail suspension in back, finding your stride in the deep stuff comes quick. So does finding your footing thanks to these radical new running boards. As you carve into Mother Nature's bounty, large diamond-shaped cutouts brush off all the snow you've just scooped up. The toothy edge roll gives you the grip you need to throw your weight around like a pro. What's more, a higher handlebar setup makes standing easy for better control in the backcountry. Opt in for the limited edition Snow Pro model with Fox Float Air Shocks up front and you'll have the world's best excuse to set your wandering mind free. The rear suspension boasts an incredible 17 inches of travel and is dampened with a lightweight aluminum Articat IFP gas shock. 
the 136-inch Camoplast Ripsaw High Performance Trail Track boasts the ultimate combination of aggressive cone-shaped lugs with a softer compound for ultra-responsive handling and traction. The Crossfire is perfectly tempered for trail riding. The AWS 6 front end is drawing plenty of attention. As if the sway bar, trail skis, and wider adjustable ski stance weren't enough, we've beefed up the double wishbone A-arms with new spindles borrowed from our race sleds. Not just lighter, the new spindles increase your turning radius 10 degrees for even more turning precision. There are four powerful laydown engines to choose from. All of them will keep you on your toes. As always, your best friend is the throttle, and the loyalty runs deep with the 1000 and the 800. The 600 offers the perfect combination of power and agility. Lighter still, the 500 performs all the magic you ask of it. It's a crossfire, and like all crossfires, it's made for riding your way, any way you ride. With thousands of miles of groomed trails just waiting for you, you're about to be spoiled by the most ergonomically correct touring machine ever built. Introducing an all new touring machine, the TLXR. Comfort, power, handling. They're all competing for your attention. This story begins a few years back. We weren't just designing one twin spar chassis, there's another. Stretched, strengthened, and reinforced, the all-new Touring chassis is ready for duty. The LXR model is loaded with all the creature comforts. In fact, it's so comfortable you'll need a darn good reason to come home when the day is done. If you like your power smooth and refined, order up the 1100 two-cylinder Z1 engine. It's the same four-stroke found in the coveted Jaguar. Mash the throttle and you'll discover the performance machine that grew into its skis. This power plant comes from a world where there is no glory in second place. Even in the corners, grab some throttle. Instantly, the ACT Diamond Direct Drive gives the 144-inch track the green light. The slide action rear suspension squats down, sure-footed, skis flat. Give it some throttle. Before you know it, one corner is gone and you find yourself well into another. As the day wears on, you wonder why you're not wearing out. Smooth power, precise handling, that's only part of it. Creature comforts speak for the rest. Infinite rider positioning, removable heated seats, passenger hand warmers, catcom, new touring bags, mirrors, remote electric start. This touring machine is equipped with everything you can imagine. That's the TLXR. There's also the T-Series. This all-new touring machine is available with a wide variety of engine choices. The T-Series is decked out with reverse, electric start, and the same suspension setup you just heard about. Yep, the one that's engineered to straighten out the corners. The 2008 Panther is another all-round touring machine that delivers in spades. Two engine choices give you the option of two-stroke or four-stroke combustion. Both machines glide through paradise, courtesy of a suspension setup that lands you in the lap of luxury. Find a curve. Get on the gas. The Panther hunkers down. What happens next will make you happy. When just up ahead is instantly just behind you, you must be riding an F-1000. The F-Series is power, performance, and comfort wrapped in a quieter, smoother, easier to rip it wide open machine. The revolutionary twin spar chassis repositions you eight to 12 inches forward. 
Now you're right in the middle of all the action, on top of it as well. The taller seat reduces knee bend for incredible comfort. Plus, this one-of-a-kind rider-forward setup enables you to transition from sitting to standing effortlessly, so you can conserve your energy and ride longer. Riding one of these machines has got to be the perfect balancing act between you and the trail. Hit a bump and the sled absorbs the jolt, not you. If that isn't enough, see what happens when you outfit a twin spar chassis performance machine with infinite rider positioning. Bottom line, trails that used to rip you up are now yours for the shredding. The new slide action rear suspension system allows full suspension movement even during acceleration. In the turns, your skis are firmly planted. That's control. The kind of control that makes riding fast wickedly fun. To satisfy your competitive spirit, our high output engines have all the get up and go your right thumb desires. What's more, they're cleaner and more efficient. Four engine choices are available to keep the Power Maniacs sane. The Nimble F5, the Brawny F6, the Muscle to the Max F8, and the Muscle to the Extreme F1000. Batteryless electronic fuel injection means quick starts, great fuel economy, and cleaner emissions. Except for the F5, all power plants boast our exhaust pipe temperature system and electronic APV exhaust valves for smoother power delivery regardless of elevation. The F8 and the F1000 make a ferocious pair. Big horsepower, low emissions, and enviable fuel consumption will keep a grin on your face from sunup to sundown. The new F8 compared to a Firecat 700 accelerates faster and delivers 25% better fuel efficiency. The Snow Pro package lets you unleash even more rip snorting velocity courtesy of the Fox Float ski shocks and a one and a quarter inch lug track. Don't underestimate the LXR with infinite rider positioning and the standard package, both showcasing Arctic Cat's patented slide action rear suspension and seventh generation AWS front suspension. The 2008 Arctic Cat F Series. These machines break all the rules. Don't believe it? Take it up with the trail. Get ready for the shot that wasn't heard round the world. The Jaguar Z1 is the complete package. The engine is a purpose-built 1056cc, four-stroke, EFI, parallel twin with dry sump lubrication and 48 millimeter throttle bodies. This is the first time you've got everything you ever wanted in a high-performance sled right under your thumb. The engine. They said it couldn't be done. Nonsense. Pistons rise and fall together. But the cylinders fire alternately, creating a power stroke with every 360 degrees of crankshaft rotation. As for emissions, this four-stroke power plant is as clean as they come and fuel economy is outstanding. The transfer of power is handled by a real class act. The act, Diamond Direct Drive. Responding to your every command, the Jaguar shifts into action smoothly and effortlessly. When the situation calls for a change of direction, standard push button reverse kicks into action with no hesitation. The state-of-the-art noise, vibration, and harshness lab was used to help shape the engine's sound quality. It was also used to help design an engine mounting system that incinerates vibration while meeting tough durability standards. The Z1 engine, which has also found a home in the new TZ1 Touring machines, was designed to sit low in the Jaguar's twin spar chassis. The low center of gravity creates ideal handling characteristics. Five years in the making, the twin spar chassis was worth the wait. Rather than welded, the majority of the chassis fastens together with self-piercing rivets. 
This improves rigidity 46% over the previous chassis. Performance is one thing, comfort is everything else, and the Jaguar nails it. The seat is adjustable, the handlebar is adjustable. In fact, if this were not the perfect performance machine, a fella might mistake it for his favorite lounge chair. The Jaguar comes equipped with a 12-volt accessory outlet and a whole lot more, including our new deluxe gauge. Fast, clean, quiet, and efficient. The Jaguar Z1 is the complete package. We call it performance refined. Family values are flying out the door. By popular demand, the fan-cooled F-Series makes its world debut. Introducing the F570. What's new? Except for the bulletproof power plant, almost everything. This one gives you all the advantages of the new twin spar chassis plus electric start and reverse. Thanks to the seventh generation AWS double wishbone front suspension and the patented slide action rear suspension, you'll have the corners cornered. This sled is light, comfortable, and downright fun to ride. Snowmobiling has always been a family affair, and we aim to keep it that way. The speed-governed Arctic Cat 120 means everybody gets in on the action. Everybody. Seeing pink? When one of our youngest loyal customers asked for something special, of course we listened. So here you go, Princess. Your hot pink 120 is ready. Boys, don't worry. Yours comes in Arctic Cat Green. Is there a better way to get from one point to another? Well, that depends on who you ask. The most respected snowmobile in the world didn't get to be that way by chance. The Bearcat is the ideal combination of all things great, including the fast track suspension, a 20 inch by 156 inch track, adjustable ski stands, hydraulic disc brake, detachable passenger seat, reverse, wide ratio clutches, and the AWS 5 front suspension. The Bearcat doesn't scrimp on power. Blast down the trail with the Bearcat wide track turbo. Renowned for its monstrous towing capacity, this beast is harboring the turbocharged four stroke 660 triple. The non-turbo 660, designated the Bearcat Wide Track, is also plenty powerful. If you're partial to power of the two-stroke persuasion, the Bearcat 570 gets its gusto from our bulletproof two-stroke fan-cooled twin. The 570 comes with all the innovations and revelations found on the Wide Track. Pick one now, or regret what you'll miss out on later. The twin spar chassis represents a new beginning for snowmobiling. We had tons of uh, what we call value analysis meetings, where every key people from each group bring their issues to the table, and then the, the department leaders uh, bring their wants and needs to the table. And our focus went toward ergonomics and natural riding position. We set out with the twin spar chassis to basically put the rider in the optimum position uh, for riding a snowmobile that, wouldn't, that would result in the least amount of fatigue and put a person in a comfortable position. I like to think of uh, as if you're sitting in your living room chair, except now you're, you're sitting in a nice comfortable position riding a snowmobile. Well, we developed a new system called the infinite rider position. And you know, you, you think about when you go and you get in your car, um, you adjust the seat to fit you as the driver. Um, that's never been really there for a snowmobile, so we thought, well, we need to move that, be able to move that seat around so that a guy can be comfortable with these long legs, short legs, and, and even how he rides. Um, we developed it to where if you raise the seat up, it puts you in more of an attack position. And so that, that was the birth of, of our adjustable seat. We have a couple channels rearward of the fuel tank, and you can set the seat 
in five different positions from the lowest position. If you're riding down the trail and it's cold and you can get behind the windshield, you feel comfortable uh, to where if you're doing a lot of cornering and you feel like you want to stand up, you can move the seat up. So from your sitting position to standing, it's even for a guy like me in my 50s, it feels uh, real comfortable. It isn't, isn't a hard feat to do anymore. We've actually been the first ones to have um, our riser block system on, uh, on a snowmobile coming right from the racetrack. What that did it is it allowed the, the rider to put in different height riser blocks to put the handlebars in different positions the way they, depending upon how they rode, if they like to stand up more or they just, for cornering, they may have liked it lower. So there was an issue where the customer um, changes all the time. So we thought, well, how do we get that? And we, one of our designers uh, came up with the uh, quick adjust. So we just have a clam, you over center the clam and you can set both the rotation of the handlebars and the position of the handlebars, relock it and it fits to what you require for your riding habits. When you drive a conventional snowmobile, you kind of feet are up in the stirrups and you're kind of stuck on the seat where you're sitting. While in the new sled, you can see that the, the running boards are flat and they give you that opportunity to move around a little more. Uh, a lot of people, when they're cornering a snowmobile, they still feel that they want to hang off the edge of the snowmobile or if they're going through some rough terrain, like to feel hooks on top of their toes. Um, we made that adjustable, so for people that want a tighter toe pocket, they can have it, or people that want loose or have a lot of movement with their feet in the toe pocket area, they can also have that. The twin spar came in to get the chassis more rigid. When we developed the Fire Cat, we developed that sled to be the fastest, most nimble sled out there. The issues with the, uh, with the Fire Cat, um, it flexed in the corners, and that led to the difficulty of getting it calibrated properly so you could get a nice tight line on a corner. To say, well, how can we make now a snowmobile that has the speed and the feeling of a fire cat, but corners and carves like the old ZR did? And that's what we set out to do here. One of the biggest features in carving and handling is chassis strength, rigidity, uh, rotation of the chassis. So when you go around the corner, you're using your suspension which is finely tuned. So making it more rigid, also making it stronger, um, was the reason why we went to the twin spar. From the onset, we knew what engine packages we wanted to put in this chassis, and we knew what features we wanted in the chassis. The more engines we can use in one chassis, the better product we can, overall product we'll have. We lay both our two-stroke and our four-stroke lay back against the tunnel housing as close to the track drive as possible. It's just centralizing your mass, so even if, they say a four-stroke engine is a heavier engine, by having it centralized to the chassis, you don't feel like it's heavy. The new chassis, the F3 chassis then, starting to find its way with the twin spars and the natural riding position into the uh, performance segment, uh, high performance segment, into trail performance segment, uh, we'll be expanding that in uh, 2008 into our touring segment. The new slide action rear suspension allows full suspension movement even during acceleration. Your skis are firmly planted. That's control. The kind of control that makes riding fast wickedly fun. One of the issues that we had uh, when you go into a corner um, and then accelerate out of the corner, you tend to, if you're coupled too hard, meaning you have a mechanically coupled suspension, um, the weight doesn't transfer and you can slide around the corner better. The problem with that is, is that you're sliding and, and you're spinning instead of grabbing traction. Now the other end of it is if you don't have any coupling, you accelerate out of the corner and it wants to lift the skis up and then you can't turn, but yet you have good traction. So how do you get both? and that's where the slide action and suspension comes in. Um, because of the mechanically coupling of the suspension, the, the sled basically wants to squat. What our slide action does, it allows the front arm of the suspension to drop out and to maintain your, your travel in the front arm, but also 
keep the track on the ground so now you can turn on the power and still have good bump absorption. So you get the best of both worlds there. The first person to lay eyes on a snowmobile just wanted to ride. The second wanted to race. And so it began. The quest to build the high-performance snowmobile. Batteryless electronic fuel injection adjusts for temperature and altitude. Expect quick starts, great fuel economy, and cleaner emissions. The exhaust pipe temperature system and electronic APV exhaust valves regulate pipe temperature to optimize performance and reduce emissions. Greg Spaulding, two-stroke engine development team leader, is glad to spend countless hours designing a new two-stroke. These EFIs, eight and a thousand, we have so many more functions in there than we had even two years ago. We control not only EFI fuel timing, obviously, which we've done for a long time, but we, we control the operation of the exhaust valves, the, the fuel delivered, the ignition timing delivered, the acceleration function by fuel. We can control all those parameters in five different temperature ranges of the exhaust pipe because we have our exhaust pipe temperature sensor. So now you can tailor all the functions you can do in an EFI to certain segments of temperature and altitude because any two-stroke, doesn't matter whose it is, any two-stroke will operate differently at varying internal pipe temperatures. The rewards come with building it and testing it. Knock is a combustion ready to happen or an uncontrolled combustion or ignition, but what it, what it is when it does knock, it's a sign of lean, too much timing, uh, too much cylinder pressure basically for whatever reason. So it's a rapid rise in pressure, so rapid that it it's a knock. So the knock sensor basically is a very, very sensitive measuring device on top of the cylinder head that feels that irregular knock. And it, it basically tells the system, uh, I've got a pressure that I'm feeling here that isn't normal. Then with the functions we have in the ECU, we can tell that whole system what to do when this knock sensor tells it it's knocking. We you, you can adjust fuel, timing, uh, different ranges of the RPM scale. So it's, uh, it's safety technology. The 800 is the perfect blend of everything you're looking for in a two-stroke engine. The goals that we now had, which were clean and responsive and good horsepower. And, and you, you put that all together and you get a package like the 8, which is uh, so much more responsive than the 700 was. On the 800s, uh, with the pipe sensor, knock sensor, and the EFI mapping refinements, uh, it's just clean, it's sharp, it's crisp. You grab a handful, you're gonna feel it. Just has that, that responsive, strong feeling just because of such a high torque curve, of, you know, a lot of mid-range torque. For some, there's no substitute for the ultimate power mill. This was a completely new design engine. It wasn't based on a, a, the 8 or some older 9. It's completely new. The 1000 is kind of deceiving. It's kind of more like your V8. It has kind of a low grumble to it. And you grab the throttle on that, and it doesn't seem like you're going fast, but you look down, and it's like, holy crap, I'm, I'm moving. <laughs> this motor has so much torque and it operates at a pretty low RPM, which in itself makes more torque in the middle. We don't like to get beat, ever, when it comes to speed, so we have guys that will run all day long for weeks on end to get that last mile an hour out of the sled, and that's what the F-1000 is. You can just cruise along at uh, 70, 80 miles an hour and virtually no no effort, no throttle, but you grab the throttle and you're, it pulls hard on your arms. It's a, it's a fun motor, it really is. It's the first four-stroke design specifically for snowmobiling. The Z1 engine is a four-valve per cylinder, 1056cc EFI parallel twin with dry sump lubrication and 48 millimeter throttle bodies. It's clean, it's efficient, it's easy to maintain. What's more, its centralized mass optimizes handling. 
The first question they asked me is, what's it take to make a four-stroke competitive with a two-stroke? We decided that if we built a four-stroke specifically for a snowmobile, we wouldn't just put a good high-performance four-stroke engine in. We didn't think that was good enough. We wanted to make a four-stroke engine that was specific for a snowmobile and would make the end user who was a two-stroke uh, customer and was very satisfied with that, we wanted to make sure he was satisfied with the four-stroke equivalent. We knew you can't be lighter than a, a two-stroke. It, it's, it's crazy to think that you can make a four-stroke absolutely lighter than a two-stroke. So what's the next best thing? Good CG location. You can actually hide weight with a good CG location. We found the CG of the engine and we also found the center of inertia. We used those components to mount the engine. And now the mounting has force lines through those components. That allows the engine to not only centralize the CG, but lower the vibration, so we get two wins. We, uh, we had two initial versions of the Z1 engine. Right now, this current configuration is 360 degrees offset in the crankshaft. That means the pistons come up together, and it has two balance shafts. Initially, we had a 360 dual balance shaft and a 180 crankshaft. The pistons were opposite, like a two-stroke, with a single balance shaft. And we had to decide which was better for the customer. And uh, through extensive testing, and we built engines, we built snowmobiles, and we rode them in the mountains, we rode them on the trail, uh, we decided that the 360 ultimately would deliver the most power and be the smoothest engine to satisfy both the performance segment and the touring segment. The, the ISC control is really unique for Articat. Uh, we developed it initially with the T660 as a mechanism to control the idle throughout the engine's life. It, it compensates for engine wear, but through our development process we realized we could use it for other functions and one of the primary functions we used it for was to reduce the amount of four-stroke engine braking when you desell the snowmobiles. When comparing it to a two-stroke and you come to the corner and you let off, off the throttle, the snowmobile likes to glide in and you want to use your brake to brake the significant amount that you want to brake. On the four strokes, what ends up happening, when you let off the throttle, the track will actually slide and skid into the corner and it upsets the handling of the snowmobile. The ISC control allows that not to happen and the snowmobile glides like a two stroke. It's really, really a big difference. Emissions is, to me, big. You know, that's why I'm here. We want an emissions friendly engine. But when you ask the customer now, today, why would you go for stroke? Would you go for the emissions or would you go because of performance? They still go for performance. So your engine still has to perform as good or better than the two stroke equivalent. We found that quieter is better. If it has some sporty tone to it, terrific. But if you can ride on it all day long and be happy at the end of the day because your ears aren't ringing, that's, that's a good thing. Um, the Crossfire was kind of a, a blend of two technologies. Um, in 2005, um, the M-Series was its first year, and after that, um, our customers, you know, the M-Series was well received, it was light, it had the high fun factor, uh, but we wanted to, to make it more accessible to the person that lives in, in the Midwest, you know, or somebody that lives in Michigan, where they, they get the deep snow, they wanted something with a wider track than what the Firecat had to offer. So what we did is we blended those two technologies, took the elements from the M-Series, took the elements from the Firecat, and brought the two together and made the Crossfire. And the Crossfire is a great sled. I mean, it's fun to ride. It's, it turns well, it handles well. It's got the rider forward ergonomics that people, people want. And uh, it's just a great sled. Once you've ridden an Arctic Cat mountain machine, you'll never look at a trail, meadow, or mountain the same. Well, the biggest challenges we had were coming off of a year in 2007 where we made major upgrades with adding an ACT reverse system, adding two new engine packages. So with that being done, we had to look at other ways we could do to improve the product. And the biggest thing for a mountain customer is weight. We always are looking to reduce weight wherever we can, make the snowmobile feel more nimble, more user friendly, um, just increase the fun factor. So we focused in on the rear suspension 
We felt that uh, we, we were able to take off about eight pounds by eliminating the torsion springs in the rear suspension, kind of redid the, the skid rails and some of the other things just to reduce weight, uh, give the whole suspension uh, kind of an open, airy feel. When you're going over the really rough trail, big G bumps, this new suspension will, will soak that stuff up. It has a float, uh, float shock in it and that will has a progressive uh, spring rate. So as it bottoms out, the spring rate goes up and it helps cushion you. So you're getting that sharp impact when you bottom out, kind of you're riding on air, so to speak. New running boards give you the grip you need to throw your weight around like a pro. You get into a situation where you have three feet of fresh powder. Um, you're going out and riding. You're doing a, a turn, you're carving in the powder. And when the sled comes back upright, uh, the running boards act like a big shovel and they just basically scoop that snow out and your foot wants to slip off normally. You want to feel like you're in control at all times and having the edge rolls, having the running boards with the, with the knockout holes, we've got about five times the, the open area that we did with our previous design. So the snow, you just drag your foot along it, the snow falls out, and you're ready to go attack the next hill. I think we took out um, a half pound uh, on the edge rolls and I think we also took out a pound on the tunnel. Just, yeah, air is lighter than aluminum. <laughs> Try as they may, nobody can follow in the footsteps of an Arctic Cat mountain machine. The M1000 gets the 153 inch or the 162 inch track. All tracks feature two and a quarter inch paddles set three inches apart. And basically what we did is the distance between the paddles, um, we were the first in the industry to go to three inches. And once again, we go back to what makes a mountain sled a good mountain sled, and it's lightweight. By going to the three inch pitch instead of the two and a half inch, we're able to reduce weight. In addition to that, we found that it actually goes through the snow better. It, it takes kind of larger chunks of snow at a time and doesn't spin out and spin down as quickly. Racing is in our blood. It's also on our minds when we're looking for new ways to improve performance. We've changed the spindles this year from 2007, and the reason we did that was so we could get a tighter turning radius. Um, primarily our focus in the past has been on off-trail mannerisms. We want to make it as lightweight and as fun off the trail as possible. This year, we're, you know, we're focusing in on on-trail characteristics, so what we did with the spindles is uh, basically used our racing style spindles, which allows the skis to turn another 10 degrees. So the trail, the way it works on the trail, it'll be able to turn sharper and just be more maneuverable. Well, I think we've done uh, a lot of things that are gonna get people excited to come ride the new touring models. Uh, we've taken all the strong attributes of the Jaguar and of the F-Series, things like the four-stroke Z1 engine, the twin spar chassis, slide action rear suspension, all those great features that we had on the one-up F-Series and Jaguar models, we've, we've taken those features and, and plus more and adapted them to two-up sleds and have created what we feel are the going to be the industry leaders in, uh, in touring, touring snowmobiles. We took a Jaguar and essentially you take the tunnel and just lengthen it out to a longer 144 inches where we're at now with our track lengths. Uh, it also resulted in uh, tipping the tunnel slightly. If you can picture the drive axle, uh, basically what we did is took the tunnel from maybe this type of angle to this, flattened it out, which brought the rear passenger down to a more comfortable level and not had the rear passenger, you know, sitting way up in the air. Um, essentially, those were the that was the main change we made along with. Um, taking the rear heat exchanger, which on the F-Series and Jaguar is uh, basically a structural member of the snowmobile. Um, that didn't lend itself well to a two-up machine, so we went back to a more conventional uh, full-length tunnel with heat exchanger up in the, in the top of the tunnel. Um, that, along with you know, tipping the chassis, were essentially the, the keys to taking the Jaguar and moving in our two-up snowmobile. We are loaded with creature comforts, uh, things like our Heated seats, we offer heated seats on both the rider and passenger seat, which is an industry exclusive. Uh, passenger hand warmers, uh, CATCOM, of course our communication system comes standard on the TZ1 model. Uh, other features include a remote start, 
Uh, these nice uh, rear storage bags, as you can see, are a standard feature. Um, it's basically loaded with features, and many of which our competitors uh, do not offer. The Tough as Nails Act Diamond Direct Drive Planetary Gear Case allows lower track speed at clutch engagement without sacrificing top speed. It also creates a more efficient transfer of horsepower from engine to track. And how about this great feature? Electronic push button reverse. You know, in the past, reverse was an accessory that you bought and, and if you asked a guy, most people would say they didn't want it. Well, as time has gone by, reverse has been more important to the customer. So we needed to get act drive or uh, reverse into our act drive and to our new sled. Now we could have gone the route of a, of a mechanical, but we felt that, um, you know, we wanted to go that extra step and, and get a push button on there. So um, some of our competitions uh, reverse systems with the push button, it has some drawbacks in that it basically has to stop the motor, turn it, back it up, and go the other way. Um, and it doesn't work on four strokes. Now our new sled with the Z1 Jaguar obviously is a four stroke and we want, we want the best to, to, for the customer. So we implemented a system that it push button, it operates a, a solenoid and it puts the sled in, in reverse. Um, really it's just the ease of, of having a reverse system that you just push a button and go backwards. Once you have it, it's something you'll never want to get rid of because just the ease of backing out of the garage or, or off a trailer or if you come to a section and you need to turn around on the trail, it's much easier than getting off and trying to move it around. We're constantly asking ourselves what we can do to make your riding experience better. Improving the functionality and design of our gauges is just one example. Um, they both have been in development for close to three years now. We went through many hours of field testing and many hours of lab testing for these both these new gauges. It's an electronic speedometer. It allows you to switch back between needle and digital readout between RPMs and speed. There's also an odometer, two trip meters, clock, fuel level indicator, and warning lights. Check engine codes will now be displayed numerically on the gauge as opposed to before it was a flashing light. The other gauge that we have is a deluxe gauge and this is also the same features that we had before. You can switch back and forth between uh, speed and RPMs and the digital and the needle. The deluxe gauge features all that and a whole lot more. New larger LCD on this compared to previous years. It now has three lines of of text display and it also has integrated into it the display for the CATCOM system to make it easier to add on the CATCOM system as an accessory. We also changed how it houses on the on top of the sled so we made it a little more sleek design in that. We're very happy with the results of these gauges and the consumers will be happy as well. There's something different about the people who ride Arctic Cat snowmobiles. Wherever you ride on this great continent, your passion spreads like the wind-driven snow. You never have to go far down the trail to find people just like you. Camaraderie is a big part of what riding is all about. Maybe that explains why we dress the way we do. You see, we wear our passion on our sleeves and across our backs. In fact, Arctic Cat riding gear and apparel is not just for riding, it's for every day. Our color is green, and everywhere we go, people respect that. We believe if you love doing something, then you should spend as much time as you can doing it. That's why each year we introduce a wide range of clothing and accessories to keep an enthusiast wardrobe fully stocked. This year, you'll find a great selection of riding suits, jackets, helmets, gloves, and daily wear apparel. And as always, something unusual to give you an Arctic Cat identity that's all your own. Of course, that goes for your sled, too. If you're looking for a unique way to accessorize your pride and joy, we've got all the parts and accessories you could ever want. So pick up a copy of the PG&A catalog at your dealer. And while you're there, be sure to check out all the new sleds.
first of all, you got to have the desire to win. You really, you really got to want to win. And that breaks it down into uh, when you want to win, you work harder on your machine, you work long hours. When you work your long hours, you learn stuff about your machine. You got to understand clutching, you got to understand the motors. More than just guts. Yeah, I'm probably one of the most gutless guys out there. God, I'm scared. Bob Elsner, Dave Thompson, Larry Coltham, Charlie Lofton. These are some of the legends that helped pave the racetrack green and black. Back then, most riders had one thing on their mind, to arrive at the checkered flag first. You bet we were there to win. But Arctic Cat always took a slightly different approach to the finish line. The racetrack was our test track. And this was our chance to push the limits of our newest technology. Today is no different. It's riders like Tucker Hibbert, Dan Ebert, Ryan Simons, and Angela Vicino. These are just some of the modern day legends bringing home title after title for the green and black. And then there's Gary Moyle, crowned world champion at Eagle River. Gary's incredible triumph makes this the sixth world championship title in a row for Team Arctic. Then came the X Games. Jaws dropped as Chris Barant soared into history, successfully completing backflip after backflip. Tucker Hibbert also won gold, proving once again that riding is in his blood, and so is winning races. Ryan Simons followed Tucker to the finish line, taking second on the road to total Arctic Cat domination. And we will continue to win. You see, racing brings out the best in us. It also brings out the best of us, the fans. See you at the races. When you ride one, it gets in your blood. and your heart pumps it through your veins. And your veins carry it to your body. And your body becomes one with machine. Riding is a way of life that gets in your blood. The Arctic Cat way of life is a handmade original. Today, the passion that was born on the prairie nearly half a century ago can be found as far away as the snow flies. From the rugged peaks of Wyoming to the meandering Maine woods, you'll find people whose loyalty runs as deep as the trail is long. It's the kind of loyalty that separates all Arctic Cat riders from the rest. For them, the mere sight of an Arctic Cat snowmobile, the sound, the smell, the distinct character is enough to send a jolt of adrenaline coursing through their veins. Thanks to a handful of fearless individuals who set their sights on achieving the impossible, snowmobiling has become what it is today. We went looking for some of these mavericks. We found three of them. And with that came a glimpse of the enviable lives they lead. Here we go. No cars coming. I'm bigger than most of them anyway.
mountain riding is by far the most exciting aspect to me of snowmobiling. Uh, it takes a fair amount of skill and stamina to uh, be able to maneuver your sled through the trees and up the mountain. And I guess that's what's driven me all these years is to make a better mountain sled. Uh, in the 70s, we used to take El Tigres and put panther tracks on them because they had more flotation, worked better in the snow. Uh, then as time uh, went on uh, and the sleds got better, we would taper the running boards up to give them more snow clearance. Sleds in the early 70s, they were quite a challenge in the deep snow and we would spend a whole day just breaking a trail to a summit. The years went by, the sleds evolved and became easier to ride in the snow and more dependable. I uh, uh, obtained feedback from consumers and also do uh, sled evaluations and report to the engineering team at Arctic Cat. Then I've worked with the Arctic engineers to develop better tracks. I've also worked with chassis development and development of lighter weight sleds that are easier to ride and work better in deep snow. You know, I'm really motivated to make a better snowmobile, uh, one that works better in the mountain terrain, and I have a lot of satisfaction in riding a sled that I've built or improved, knowing that uh, I've made a difference. Spend a, quite a bit of time on the road looking for snow and people to ride with. I'm towing a 48-foot gooseneck trailer, and I've got nine Arctic Cat snowmobiles in the back. When I'm loaded, I weigh 26,000 pounds, which is right at the legal limit. Uh, most people are pretty surprised when I open the door and get that many sleds out. I've got uh, enough spare parts to probably rebuild a complete snowmobile and uh, of course all my gear. Because the sleds have evolved and continue to get better all the time, we keep having to find more extreme terrain to test in. On some of those trips, we're chained up with all four uh, wheels on the truck and it gets, it gets pretty exciting from time to time. Uh, snowmobiling's in my blood and in my family's blood. That's how we've put meat and potatoes on the table is by riding snowmobiles and, and having fun in the sport. At Arctic Cat, we've always taken what we do seriously, so you can seriously enjoy life. They're working hard to keep the cat, the finest in the land. They're planning things for snowmobiles, ain't never yet been planned. They're thinking thoughts, but even they don't fully understand. They go about as far 36 as years ago, a big block panther made a big impression. Uh, in 69, my father uh, said he had a, uh, a friend uh, that he knew that had an air compressor, a home air compressor. And back in those days, a home air compressor was something most people didn't have. It was kind of a novelty to have it. So we went and looked at this air compressor. In this man's garage was a snowmobile. Now, we had never seen a snowmobile. It, was, uh, it wasn't an Autocap, but it was another, another brand. And we saw it, it had a little tag-along sleigh with it. Well, we developed an interest in the sled. So instead of buying the air compressor from my father's friend, we ended up buying the snowmobile. And then, oh, I don't know, a week or two later, we went up to the park and riding around. And this road that we were on was such a nice road. I was flat out, thought I was doing quite a thing. Until this black thing went by me, like I was anchored. And then I went to find this guy. He was down in the parking lot. We get down there and I said, what the heck have you got? He says, I'm a dealer. He says, Jesus, try it. And my father, being as competitive as he is, uh, and still is today, decided it was time to update. Uh, we only owned the Johnson for a week. And in, on, probably on the eighth day, we owned the Big Block Panther. So from that point on, we were hooked on snowmobiling, and it just, it, it just developed from there.
first sled that I actually owned myself was a 634 Puma. My father bought me the, the Puma at uh, one of the local dealerships. We modified it, we sent it to the dealer, and he took the motor apart and modified the sled, and, and uh, I had a blast with that, uh, that Puma. To me, Cat did something that nobody else did. They built a black sled. They built a sled with a big motor hanging out the front end of it. They won with it. They were, they were very successful with it. So it was easy to choose Cat. When the King Cat came along, I think that was the icing on the cake. That just solidified my interest. I've wanted a four-cylinder King Cat from the day that they first arrived at the dealership. Word traveled. That was, that was big news. And, uh, it got back to, to me that you know, one of the four cylinder King Cats arrived at the dealership. We went up and looked at it. And from that day on, I wanted to own one. It didn't take long for me to realize that the collection was gonna get pretty big. By the seventh or eighth sled, I knew that I was gonna need a facility to house these. So we built uh, a playroom, foyer, garage, and two thirds of that became the playroom. When I designed the playroom, I designed it knowing I was gonna put the sleds in it. Instead of the studs being 16 inches on center, they were 12 inches on center. Knowing that I was gonna be hanging kitty cats, I needed that support. Knowing that I was gonna need 12 inch spans to, to hang all the different collectible items and memorabilia and, and even sleds uh, onto the wall. Uh, we built a 20 foot in the wall display case. Uh, so we built it with that in mind. But as it stands today, the room can accommodate probably 36 sleds, uh, including the two kitty cats that are up on the wall. That's the uh, David Heights House uh, Team Able Snow Pro sled. It's a 340, it's a 95 mile an hour sled. Uh, didn't have to restore it, it was in that nice a condition. Uh, we fired it right up, uh, thing runs great. Uh, it just, the only thing I did was probably touch up the spindles and the skis uh, from just some of the wear and tear from the track ice and stuff. This whole collection is a result of passion. And if you try and explain passion, passion is the love for the product and what it represents. That's the best way I can define passion. Uh, I didn't create the passion, I cat created the passion. Uh, I just took uh, advantage of it. I can't take credit for saying that I designed it. I mean, I can say I restored the stuff, but I, all I did was just recopy what they created. And uh, it, they, they really hold the rights to it, whether it's on paper or not. It was Cat who built it, designed it, put the thought process into it. Uh, and, you know, we can all say that, you know, it's our collection and be proud of it. But you really got to take a back seat to Cat and really just give them the credit for what they did. A thousand times you throw your leg over the saddle. A thousand times the hairs on the back of your neck remind you why. Uh, a group of us were in a scout program and we were in, actually in Quebec and um, uh, the uh, chaperones had left and uh, there was nothing for us kids to do in the motel so we rented snowmobiles um, and I was hooked and that's 50 years ago. I mean I wanted to do nothing else but ride snowmobiles. I really enjoy that. When I started in, in, in the mid-80s, um, we the company was coming off from what they call gone fishing and was reorganizing itself. When I finished um, last January, uh, my territory was the uh, state of Maine and um, eastern New Hampshire, and I had about 35 dealers. Every one of my dealers that I had were enthusiasts. Um, and that's why every year I always would ride, run a, a dealer corporate ride. Uh, it was important, I thought, for dealers to ride. Um, it was important for them to bring the experience back. If they were in a no-snow area, they could come back and they could talk to their customers about the snowmobile experience. Whether they got their customers to go on a ride again, at least they knew there was some snowmobiling somewhere and they could go and enjoy the product. I had been doing Cat's Pride rides corporately um, for dealers and so forth, but um, I thought uh, nobody had been really doing cat's prides for individuals 
um, in this part of the country. Last year was, was interesting getting going. This year looks like the rides are, are pretty full um, and we're enjoying it. Uh, we have more fun doing the tours. I think some of the people doing it on the tour. I mean, it's they really enjoy it. it it's, it's lots of fun to do. And uh, we're now starting to see repeat customers. Uh, Cat's Pride was established over 40 years ago with Arctic. Um, it was uh, an idea that they thought um, it was good to uh, start a club and get um, uh, like-minded people to snowmobile, uh, have events, people go to, um, and again, come back to the camaraderie part of it. Um, and it, it's grown over the years. Um, people join every year. Uh, there's a list that people can uh, research other people. Uh, it, it's, it's very interesting. Uh, not, other manufacturers have tried to do it, but it's never been as successful as it has been with Arctic Cat. I think the, the family aspect of snowmail is really important. It keeps families together. Um, it's a healthy thing. You know, I mean, I've seen um, people out on the trail with, with their little kids on kitty cats coming behind them going eight or 10 miles an hour down the trail. Snowmobiling in this area, including Maine and Vermont, really are based around the Appalachian Mountain Systems. Um, and, and it really seems to lay itself right across the three states very well. And that's where you find the most snow. Most popular snowmobile in this area is touring. This county has over 3,000 miles of groomed trails. But you can also access um, Maine trails from here. Um, you can also access Vermont trails. The total network between uh, the three states is over 12,000 miles. Um, you could be in Quebec in two and a half hours from here, and Quebec has uh, almost 30,000 miles of trails. The lifestyle is the most important thing about snowmobiling for me. Um, it has been for the 50 years that I've snowmobiled. Uh, I've met people all over this country and all over this world at this point. But more so it was um, the experience of snowmobiling was the greatest part of it um, and the camaraderie. July, you just can't wait for it to snow. You know, you start the machine up just so you could smell, just smell the oil and hear the pipes. I had a 630 forward pipes. I, every, I bet every other day I was out there firing that sled up just because I wanted to hear them pipes. 90 degrees, I had to hear the pipes. I remember being out on the trail one day, and another friend of mine, two friends, was an enthusiast. And he had the hood up, and he was just playing with the carburetors. And some snowmobiles were coming, and the older fella closed the hood, and he said, why did you do that? He said, I the cats don't break. I don't know anything else. That's all I've ever done, a snowmobile. I live to ride, how's that? It, once it gets in you, it gets in you. And when you saw that, and you felt it, and you heard it, you're hooked. You're done. But the guys at Arctic say it's these people who make the difference. Skilled craftsmen who turn out I don't know how many snowmobiles every day. Well, I do know, but I'm not going to say it. I mean, you're okay, but that guy sitting next to you just might be from Skidoo. Yes, these people are the key. Dedicated people. In fact, the guys at Arctic say that for these people, making snowmobiles ranks right up there with sex. That's what they say. <laughs>